Well, good afternoon and welcome to, to Christchurch. Welcome to our service uh, on a Wednesday afternoon. Good to see many of you. And uh, if you're new, welcome to you as well. If you've not been to our service uh, this uh, on, on a Wednesday. And welcome if you're watching later uh, this service as it's recorded. You might have picked up a Bible on your way in, perhaps with a notice sheet. And uh, in future weeks, you might see on a Sunday or a Wednesday a service book as well. And we're moving, we're trying to make it easier to do these online services. So we're not going to stop putting Bible words on the screen. But you've got Bible words in the Bible. And if you're watching at home, I trust you've got a Bible, perhaps on a phone or uh, an actual physical Bible, to so make use of that. But if you're using any books in the building, if you could just return those books, please take them away with you so no one else has to touch them, just you. Uh, they've all been cleaned and left for you to pick up this morning, uh, this afternoon, sorry. And if you'd like to put it on the tape, put those books, which is just a Bible today, but if it's a service book or a hymn book in future, we should put it on the table that's marked with a sign at the end, and we'll leave it there for 48 hours before we move it again. Okay. I think even the organ understood that instruction. So, uh, so just to make sure we all do that as safe as we can. We're going to start with a song. It'll be on the screen. Uh, and uh, the song is... We have a gospel to proclaim. We have good news. Christians are good news people. And, uh, and we have a gospel that Jesus has brought to us, that the Holy Spirit proclaims to us, and we proclaim it, of course, to others. So we're going to sing that to start. If you'd like to stand, uh, of course, we sing uh, to ourselves and in our hearts to God. Please be seated, and we're going to start by saying a prayer, which I'll put up uh, on the screen for us, a prayer that we would know uh, God's good news story for ourselves, 
and the transforming power of that gospel this afternoon uh, and indeed the rest of our lives. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. We're going to read the words of Psalm 83 uh, to each other. Uh, a song, a hymn, perhaps of the Old Testament, a psalm of Asaph, this one, Psalm 83. Uh, these words on the screen will be different to the words in the, in the church Bibles, actually, uh, because it's a slightly different Bible version. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, the, 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 those NIVs are the older one. This is the only one. The newer one is the only one you can get online. So, uh, um, but there we are. But this psalm speaks as we read it. It sounds strange sometimes reading Old Testament psalms because our situation is different from the people of God in the Old Testament, which was the nation of Israel. And uh, this psalm speaks about how the enemies of God's people then would be called to be defeated by God. And of course, our enemy is not a people group, but it is, of course, the evil one. It is sin and death is the final enemy of which we can call upon God to defeat for us in Jesus Christ. So as we say this psalm, it might sound weird, but we sort of translate it into being New Testament people and acknowledge Jesus as the one who's defeated our enemy, which is a spiritual one, of course. So the numbered verses we say together, O oh God, do not remain silent. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloof, O God. See how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation, so that Israel's name is remembered no more. With one mind they plot together. They form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, of Moab and the Hagrites, Biblios, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the people of Tyre, even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. Do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor and became like dung on the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, Let us take possession of the pasture lands of God. Make them like tumbleweed, my God, like chaff before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, or a flame sets the mountains ablaze. So pursue them with your tempest, and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, Lord, so that they will seek your name. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. Just going to mention some of the things that are happening in the life of our fellowship. Having said that psalm that acknowledges God's victory over uh, his enemies, uh, victory over sin and death through Christ. Let us uh, think about what we're happening here at, Christ at Christchurch, nine o'clock. Uh, we've always got our nine o'clock service, and this Sunday that is the case uh, with communion this uh, coming Sunday. You don't have to book for that. If you're coming to St. John's, I know many of you do, just to remind you to, to book in for that if you can, please. Just helpful to know. We're increasing the numbers slightly, a few, few more extra seats this week, uh, and uh, that's 10.30, also online. For those of you who wish to stay at home or allow space. But it's the same service, slightly more traditional here at Christchurch, slightly more uh, modern contemporary style at St John's, but the same sermon, same message, 
Same truths at both those services. So you might want to come here if you normally go to St John's, make a bit more space for the children and youth groups that are happening there and for families, but equally it's online as well. And uh, we had, a, we had a, a car park communion uh, in, the, in the car park at St John's, which I know a few of us were there, which uh, we, uh, we may repeat. Uh, it is getting a bit colder uh, out there, but we may repeat it before Christmas. But we were looking at starting another service uh, and other services as well to in, increase capacity. To, to increase our spiritual health, because it's good to see one another, isn't it? I think it's good to see each other where we can safely, distance and all the rest, uh, but also our mental health as well, I think, uh, as well. So that's that. Uh, Christchurch, next week we won't be online, so if you're watching this online uh, later, today or tomorrow or whenever, unfortunately we won't be able to do that for next week, but the week after uh, normal service will be resumed. So uh, perhaps we'll have lots of people in here next week, I don't know, as a result of that but next week it will, will not be recorded. We'll be using books uh, mostly. There is, uh, for those of you who are interested in these things, uh, the North East Gospel Partnership, which uh, many of us at St John's are involved in. They've got an evening, which St John's hosted last, last November. It's not being hosted uh, anywhere physically, but it is on a uh, YouTube uh, page. This is on the notice sheet for, for Sunday, it will be. But if you're watching this, you can just pause the video jot down the really helpful ELEL 48 Sizia A. I mean, you must have thought the names in the psalm were difficult, uh, but that's, the, that, that's hosted on a different church uh, website to St. John's and, the, and this YouTube channel, if you wish to join in with that. But it says, together in the gospel in tough times. And a prayer meeting, which is not just for St. John's, but it's Christchurch as well, if you wish to join us. We always pray for Christchurch. Um, although no one from Christchurch turns up really but there, there we go, we keep praying for Christchurch but uh, it's 7.50 for 8 o'clock a week, uh, two weeks today two weeks today, the 4th of November well let, let's, uh, let's pray and I'm going to lead us in prayer now you might want to join with me in those responses as I pray for some of those things and other things in our world, let's pray Father God we thank you that we have good news we have good news of the victory of Christ who has, in his death and resurrection, opened the way to eternal life, where all the chaotic things of this world, whether it's the chaos of work, whether it's the chaos of a virus that has up created great upheaval and uncertainty, whether it is just the, the, the chaos of the environment, all kinds of other issues that might be going on, issues of conflict, all these things will be no more one day because Christ has conquered every evil thing through his death and resurrection. So help us to be people who proclaim this good news. Lord, we pray for people who've perhaps not really been to church, maybe not ever, and have in this time of uncertainty watched things on the internet or asked questions of themselves and got talking to a friend or a neighbour or a family member and are starting to hear this good news. We pray for them that they would find life in Christ Jesus and find hope in a world that needs it, uh, perhaps all the more at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the work of the churches here in uh, Jarrow, South Tyneside, and, and, and nearby in heaven as well. Lord, we pray that you would help churches to uh, engage in a sense of fellowship in whatever way they can over the months uh, coming forwards. Lord, we pray that uh, you would uh, help the things like Remembrance Sunday, perhaps All Souls or Memorial Services or, and Christmas beyond that, services that will have to be very different this year. We pray that there be occasions still of celebration and thanks and uh, turning to you, uh, the good news story uh, of Christ for us. Uh, Lord God, we pray that you would guide all in church leadership, our, our bishops and our archdeacons and our clergy and our preachers and all those who work in terms of music and finances and keeping buildings running and all those who are involved in fellowship in different ways which is all of us help us to be showing love for one another and uh, support for one another all the more as we anticipate being united fully and finally on that day when Christ returns Lord in your mercy hear our prayer pray for the wider world Lord uh, we pray for the, uh, the issues of uh, local areas being changed from one tier to another and the restrictions and the diff discussions between central government and, and local representation, local government council leaders, mayors. 
Father God, we pray those discussions and debates about money and restrictions would be constructive, uh, that wise and right decisions would be made. Lord, we pray that you would help us in a, a time where we need to stand together and work together, where that would be well done by leaders and representatives making difficult choices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift up to you our schools as they come towards the end of the first half term of this uh, new school year and in a very new and different situation. Lord, we give you thanks for all the hard work that has been done in schools through teachers and staff and governors, uh, local authorities and, and all the rest to, to make sure schools could be open and as safe as they possibly can for the education and benefit of children and young people. We pray that you would help them through their tireless work to get good rest if possible over the half term break and as we hear of many schools have had to send pupils home we pray for the, those families where that has happened that they'd be able to cope that there would be resources in those homes whether it's digital or physical uh, that would be supportive uh, learning environments that the new way of learning online would be uh, effective even though it's not as good and most of all we pray for the safety and welfare of young people and children lord in your mercy hear our prayer we also pray for the safety and, and welfare of people we know who are not well at the moment for, for les conroy and harriet gainer josh huskinson joan middleton brenda prophet julie ratter pat spedding julie tate and elizabeth white pray we look we pray lord for your comfort healing peace in their souls and for the family and friends of margaret gillespie jennifer mcdine joan nicholson and Pat and Bill Spedding, Lord, we pray that you would help them, help them to know your comfort and love as they mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Father God, we, uh, as we turn to you in prayer, keep us trusting you in all your good promises and good purposes. And so we say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have our Bible reading now, and we've been reading through uh, 1 Corinthians, and we're going to read the next bit, 1 Corinthians 6. Jackie's going to come and read that for us, so you might need a Bible, Jackie. Have you got a Bible? And uh, while Jackie's finding it, bringing a Bible, uh, come up here, Jackie, and it's page 1147 in this Bible, but if, if, you've got, if you're using your own Bible, it'll be a different page, probably, but 1 Corinthians 6, 1 to 11. Thank you, Jackie. So the reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, and this can be found on page 1147 if you're using the Bible. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, you are not competent to judge trivial cases. Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges, even men of little account in the church. I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother goes to law against another, and this is in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means that you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. 
neither the sexually immoral, uh, immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, not male prostitutes or homosexual offenders, not thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jackie. We'll reflect on that in a moment. Let's uh, stand. We'll say the words of the Creed. It's uh, up there uh, before us. And uh, let us affirm our faith in God before we reflect on that. We say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, please be seated. And if you've got uh, that the Bible reading still open, we'll look at it now. But let me pray uh, for God's help. Father God, we, uh, we, we pray for your help, that we would hear your voice through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who proclaims good news to us, your love to us. And also for the Holy Spirit, who convinces us of your truth. May our ears and our hearts be open to whatever truth you'd have us here today. Amen. Well, perhaps you're like me in the way that you like, uh, don't we like to be, be shown to be right? Not, none of us likes to be wrong. It's, you might, perhaps you, I don't know if you like quiz shows. Quite often I uh, meet people as we talk about someone who's passed away for, in preparation for their funeral. It's not unusual for, for people of a certain age to like quiz shows. It seems to be all that's on TV sometimes on some channels. And do, do you know the answer? And we, you know, the idea is you try and get them right, don't you? We like to be right. But we also like to be right in terms of be shown to be in the right. Not just to have the right answer, but to be shown to have done the right thing. And we like to have the chance to put the record straight. You have that experience where somebody says something and it's kind of different to what... It's a misrepresentation of what you said or what you stand for. That happens to me a lot. People have said, Ian, you said this. And I said, I didn't say that. You misunderstood me. And sometimes that can be hard work. That's going on at the moment, isn't it, all the time? You look, think about the issue of, of COVID. And uh, you, you've got, certainly, I, I, I don't watch Prime Minister's questions. I don't watch the House of Commons. It's a bit quieter now. They're not there, isn't it? Much, much more civil. Get rid of these MPs. Keep them at home. If they've got a question, put it on a screen. Yeah, none of this heckling and all the rest of it. So I've no idea what, what but, I, but I hear on the radio discussion between Keir and Boris uh, about how things are going yeah, there should be a full lockdown is it a circuit breaker or a fire break or a wind break i'm very confused anyway it's, it's something that someone's just going to stop get stop everyone from going out and all the rest of it virus spreading or, or is it you know the restrictions are fine we'll keep it as it is there's a discussion and the question is who's right well i told you so and all the rest of it you, people like to be shown that they were right and they don't like it when it turns out that they were wrong 
Sometimes it's more important to be seen to be right than actually be right. And, and what is right anyway? Who knows? Well, we like to be seen to be right. We like to be done right by. Uh, no one likes to be taken advantage of. And going on in the church in Corinth from 1 Corinthians 6, that is the issue that has been discussed about. We've said that the first Corinthians is all about being truly spiritual. Uh, being truly spiritual. And the church in Corinth, Let's say it was called Christ Church Corinth, or St. John's, or St. Peter's, or whatever church you go to in Corinth, maybe more than one. They thought they were super, they were really spiritual. Look what's going on. We've got tongues, we've got prophecy, we've got great signs of God's Spirit. And they may have had a point, of course, but Paul's challenging to say, Are you really, really spiritual? Is God really at work in you as much as you might think? Though you might have these manifestations we might call spiritual gifts going on last week we looked at an issue where there was this toleration of sin sexual sin a man was sleeping with his father's wife his uh, his mother-in-law uh, sorry his stepmother i said it wrong last week i said mother-in-law i meant stepmother i get very confused i'm a bear of little brain but uh, yeah with his mother and uh, his stepmother sorry he said it wrong again and this week it's about their attitude towards each other verse one to six describes the situation verse one if any of you has a dispute with another dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints and so it goes on what's going on here is if they've got a dispute in their fellowship rather than working it out between them they said right i'm going to take i'm going to sue you i'm going to take you to court to the civil courts down the roads and paul is saying throughout here don't do that he says here, verse 2, do you not know that the saints will judge the word? He talks about judgment, and we're not going to cover into all of this stuff. But he says, verse 4, therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges even men of little account in the church. He says this, verse 6, instead, one brother, one Christian, goes to law against another, and this in front of unbelievers. Now, let me just say, this is not about stuff that is illegal. You know, this, is not, this is not stuff about you know, murder or, or child abuse or anything like that. It's not about state law. It's not about something that's illegal. It's a civil dispute. I, I say that because over the years, the Church of England has fallen foul of, on safeguarding. It's been in the news quite recently, hasn't it, where the, what's happened is bishops or whoever it is, archdeacons, clergy even uh, as well, they've said, right, there, there's this issue. Somebody's been naughty we're going to deal with it internally and the church of england has fallen foul other churches as well and said no that's got to be that's got to be done legally the police have got to get involved social services and, and quite right so th when paul is saying don't take it to unbelievers he's not talking about safeguarding or matters of breaking the law he's talking about civil disagreements it might be like this someone has borrowed my car in church and it came back a little bit damaged and i say right i'm going to sue you that's the kind of thing that was going on rather than settling it between them and perhaps if there's a dispute or a point of view within the the, the fellowship uh, of christ they're doing that kind of thing they're taking each other to court over things that are, are not legal and paul says sort these issues out in house come on you can sort these things out between you yes there are squabbles in church even serious ones can be dealt with on, on those kind of issues there are pagans watching says paul to this church and they see these christians up against each other and what are they going to think what are they going to think i mean didn't jesus say these christians should love one another and work it out between them and bear and forgive one another and not work that out in these kind of issues and yet they're trying to make money out of each other in a civil way in a court way civil court way and the problem here in Corinth is a desire to be proven to be right. That's why they're doing it. That's why they're taking each other to, to, to a civil court to sue each other or whatever it is for damages or whatever it is, restitution. They're doing that because they want to be shown to be right. So, look, I'm in the right, you're in the wrong. I'm going to get a secular authority to approve of my opinion and to make good on the damage. And Paul says it is better to just let yourself be wrong. Verse 7. The very fact you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? So yeah, okay, someone has borrowed your car and it's come back damaged. 
Just let it be. Or maybe you've said something and somebody's twisted those words and misrepresented you. Don't take them to court and sue for libel or defamity or whatever it is for your reputation. Just let people, just let people think that. It doesn't matter. What you, what, just, have, just be happy to be in the wrong. It doesn't really matter what your reputation is like. You don't need to be proved to be right, says Paul. Think about Jesus for a minute. Just think about Jesus, what happened to him. He is God. He spoke the truth. He, he, he never said a, a, a word that was out of place. But even though he was God, and even though he did what God does, heals people, helps people, spoke the truth, what happened to him? He was beaten. He was mocked. Lies were told about him at his trial, weren't they? And he was even executed on a cruel cross. That was the worst shameful thing that could happen to you back then. In this life, he was not proved right, was he, in that sense? Did he take them to court? On the cross saying, look, I'm going to sue you for this. Someone's going to put this right. No, he suffered it, didn't he? He was happy to be said to be wrong. And in his father's eyes, of course, his father's eyes saw him as right. But before sinful humanity, he did not need to be proved to be right. And so as Christians who follow Christ, neither do we. Yes, the car might come back with that scratch. And they didn't admit responsibility. And we might have lost out. So what? Yes, they might have said something or twisted my words or misunderstood. Or maybe they even did it willfully. So what? So what if the street thinks ill of me? Do I fight back? We don't need to be proved to be right. And the reason we don't need to be proved to be right is because Jesus has already made us right in God's sight. That's the issue, isn't it? True spirituality says, I don't need to look good in front of you because I already look good in front of God because of what Jesus has done for me. Paul goes on to say, to live in a way that lifts up lifts us up as in the right look i'm right and to put others on the in the wrong that can become manipulation that is wrong he says in in verse eight instead you yourselves cheat and do wrong don't do this don't try and get one over each other he goes on in verse nine if you're going to live this way well look who else lives this way do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of god talks about not inheriting you you know who inherits it's the heir, isn't it? And, and the heirs are the children. If you're children of God, don't live that way, seeking to be put into the right all the time. He goes on to say, just look at all the ungodliness around, sexually immoral people, the adulterers, the, the prostitutes, homosexuals. Uh, this is all about action, by the way, not uh, attitude. Uh, thieves, the greedy or drunkards, the slanderers, they're not going to inherit over the page the kingdom of God. And that's what some of you were. We were shown to be not in the right. But that has all changed, hasn't it? That's what you were, verse 11. But what happened? But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. You were washed. Yes, you might not look washed in the eyes of society. You might not look squeaky clean. But Jesus has washed you if you trust in him and you are clean before God you've been sanctified that is to be made holy not by a civil judge in the law court or the magistrate or whoever it is but by God you have been justified that is declared right not by a human being who's weighing your case but by the almighty God who does right and says what is right we do not need to be proved to be right in this life. Instead, we live godly, clean lives before God as his children, as heirs. And we, if we do that, acknowledging Jesus is washing for us, we will inherit his kingdom. We don't need to be proved to be right because God has made us right in Jesus. There's a lot of washing going on at the moment. Hand washing, hand sanitizing. Were your hands really sore back in March when you were washing them every 10 seconds? It really, really sore, wasn't it? Washing, scrubbing, trying to make sure I'm clean, I'm not carrying this, this virus around. Jesus has washed everything away from us if we trust in him. So why do we need to be proved to be right in front of 
fellow human beings. That is tiring, isn't it? They might not even believe us. There's all kinds of things going around. But we can be truly washed already and already are washed by Jesus. Deeply cleansed. Let's be satisfied with what Christ has done for us. Let's pray. Father God, we live in a world where we don't like to be shown up to be wrong or in the wrong. And maybe things will happen to us in this life where people say things that aren't true about us. Or maybe uh, things will be, uh, you know, we, we have a sense of, of missing out or a sense of loss. But help us to look to Jesus. Wrong things were said about him. He certainly suffered loss as he gave his life on that cross. Help us to know that that very act that he did for us at Calvary has made us right before you. And though we might not be made right between, before our fellow, uh, fellow human beings, men and women in our community, in our town, in our family even, help, it, help us to be satisfied that we have been washed clean by Jesus before you. And how you see us matters most of all. Help us to cling to these truths. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to uh, confess our sin before we receive uh, communion in the form of bread. So let me put those words up for us on the screen. Let me read this introduction and we'll confess our sin, our need for washing that such were we before Christ washed us. So you then who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comforts and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and lead us to life eternal through Jesus Christ who has washed us, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of comfort that our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true. And worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And hear what St John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, 
a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he is betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So I'll bring the bread out shortly to you. And as you take that, we'll receive that all uh, together as I come to the front. I'll say some words together at that point. But draw near to Christ in faith. May his body and blood preserve your body and soul for everlasting life. Eat in remembrance that he has died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. So we eat this and remember that Christ has died for us. Let us say the Lord's Prayer as our Saviour has taught us. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us express our thanks to God and our desire for change in these words. We say together, Almighty God, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand for a final song, Thine Be the Glory. our time by saying these words of peace that we have through Christ who has died and risen again for us and made us right before God. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.